All right, so I finally have a good idea for an app. It's an app that I think I can make really good money with. I know how I would get my first users, and I think there is a very big market for the app that I'm about to build. And this video is the first video of a series of videos that I'm gonna put together one by one where I'm gonna take an idea from my head and launch it to the app store and generate my first hundred dollars in revenue. Maybe my first thousand dollars, maybe my first ten thousand dollars. I'm not sure. All I know is that once I launch it, I can make unlimited money. This is an app that I've been excited about for a couple weeks now and I've been waiting to kind of get my feet under me to get started and I feel good today. I feel like it's the start of a new chapter for Ambitious Labs. We've been growing. We have an awesome community. Um, all of y'all have supported us through this journey of building the number one no-code academy in the world and I think now is time that I take a step back for a second and I go end to end and I build another app. The last app that I built was Virally. Um, that was an app that was kind of like my prototype for um, proving if everybody could build an app just like Virally, and I proved it correct. And that's why I started the biggest no-code school in the world. Um, and now I'm gonna take a step back and for educational purposes, I'm going to start from scratch and build an app completely, completely from scratch. Um, so the challenge is, is I'm gonna do this without coding. So everything that I'm gonna do in this series is gonna be using AI and no-code tools. So these are gonna be a string of AI tools that I use in my daily workflow. This is not me trying to um, impress anybody. This is not me in try trying to teach proper um, you know, curriculum. I'm just gonna show you how I, as a 2024, you know, 22nd century app builder, is gonna build an app. And I think that this is the way that indie entrepreneurs and startup founders business owners are going to be operating their internet businesses long-term. So what you're about to see in this series um, is just my raw kind of freestyle train of thought. I'm not gonna really be um, planning these videos much. I don't have a, a strategy. I'm not taking you through something, you know, step-by-step step that I have laid out. I got nothing planned. I'm just gonna hit record um, and take this end-to-end. -end. Um, this is me trying to prove to y'all that through my experience of, you know, 10 years building companies, building startups, I have absolutely nailed the process of building an app. And that's exactly what my mission is on this planet now is to teach you guys the process that me, my network, uh, our building team at Ambitious Labs that we've been through the trenches. We have the scar tissue, uh, the wounds and the um, blood, sweat and tears that we put in to learn this stuff. And um, I've never been more excited to package it all up in a way that I think uh, people are going to love. So um, I'm going to go for about 10 minutes here. This is my introduction video and I'm going to land on uh, the initial scope of work that I want to build for my app. And since I'm using AI, I truly think that we should be able to crush this in just a couple hours. Um, so this video, I'm going to go till it's 7.04. I'm going to go to about 7.12, 7.15 um, and we will just keep going from there. So without further ado, um, let's start working on my app idea. So on my left-hand side over here, I have ChatGPT. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Like I'm not really someone that relies on ChatGPT a lot. Like if you kind of see my, you know, history here, like this is today, seven days, 30 days. I don't really have that many things. So, um, and you'll notice that like, I don't write any of the ambitious labs content with ChatGPT. Like none of the learning curriculum that I do, I use ChatGPT for. ChatGPT is quite honestly just helped me write here and there, but all the content that I do inside of ambitious labs, like that's raw, um, very well planned, handwritten content. I have an entire notion system. I don't know why I just don't trust the the the, the direction that kind of ChatGPT kind of takes my brain. So I don't really use it for content. Um, I prefer to be intentional about what I teach um, when I'm creating content inside of the academy. But uh, for now, I'm just going to use ChatGPT just to honestly get my thoughts down, and I'm going to show you how quickly we can get step one out of the way. So step one is to be able to kind of in words express my idea and put down all the functional requirements. We call this a PRD. Um, a PRD is a project requirements document, and this is something that companies, big, small, you know, agencies, uh, they all use. So a PRD defines the requirements of a particular product including the purpose, features, functionality, and behavior. This can be really lengthy. This can be really short and concise. I'm gonna go for AI powered. So the idea is that we want to lay out kind of our goals, our user stories, you know, potentially some designs 
And then clarification, scope of work. This is what most entrepreneurs get wrong. You don't really know what they want to build. So when entrepreneurs come into Ambitious Labs, they have an idea um, and we require everyone to kind of onboard their project with us and fill out their project intake form. This is just a very standard practice. Um, and you should honestly be writing out what you want to build too. Um, otherwise, you just won't really have like mindset alignment. You won't have direction. And, you know, I lead a team of 15 at Ambitious Labs and I've learned that like documents and slide decks and visuals, things that are just very comprehensively written out are the best way to um, just gain mindset alignment across teams. And so I um, encourage you to embody a similar mindset, right? Cool. So we're going to put together our PRD and I'm going to show you why in a second. Um, so I want to build um, an app that helps sales reps get better at sales. Um, I just spilled the beans. I know that was kind of underwhelming, but that's my app idea. I want to build an app that helps sales reps get better at sales. And I want to build like the Duolingo an AI powered Duolingo for sales reps. And I think sales reps is an amazing market. Sales is an awesome career. Uh, we have sales reps at Ambitious Labs who... Um, are helping people get into the program. You know, we're tapped in with other companies who all run sales departments. Cause at the end of the day, like if you want to be a company, you have to sell your product. And so I think sales reps are a really good um, market to be building for. Um, so I'm going to write out kind of a basic uh, requirements document that indicates all the features that I want to build. And I already have all these features in mind. I've already thought about all these features. I'm just going to be writing them out. So here we go. Um, you are building an app called, and this is my app name, Closer Academy. Closer Academy, an AI sales trainer. You're, you are my you know, product manager and you're going to help me build an MVP. An MVP is a very lean product that accomplishes the main purpose of, you know, the, that accomplishes, uh, that solves the problem we, that provides a lean functional, actually we can't say lean again, that provides a functional solution for the problem we want to solve. So the app idea is this, uh, an app where sales reps can log in and every day they are prompted with a new um, challenge. The challenge, uh, the, the sales rep has to complete the challenge every day one time a day to keep their streak alive. The challenge is a situation, is a sales situation where the rep is selling a product to someone and uh, they are to role play a situation. They are then given feedback on the uh, on the evaluation. So my MVP is just gonna be like one challenge, one answer. I think there's a situation where, you know, in the future we can have like more of a role play where you're going back and forth, back and forth and just kind of handling the, the situation. I think that'd be really cool. But for my MVP, I just want it to be one prompt, one response and that gets saved. And then it says, thank you. And it moves on. So um, there are two tabs in the app or three, three tabs. Three tabs on the bottom of the Flutter mobile app. One is challenge, which displays your daily challenge and daily streak. Uh, then there is um, history, which displays your previous challenge submissions. And then there's profile, which displays your um, profile picture, username, and uh, email. Yeah, cool. Um, write me a list of features. Write me a list of features that I could, or well, write a um, 
product requirements document that outlines list of features, user types, um, objects and entities. Um, API integrations. I would be using uh, OpenAI API. Um, and keep in mind this is a MVP. We don't need to overcomplicate. No, we only need when you come up with feature ideas, ask yourself if it is a want or a need essentially what i'm asking here is like uh when you come up with the feature idea like is it a want or is it a need like do we absolutely have to have it because it's an mvp like we want this to be very lean and we don't really want to overcomplicate this so um we only want to include features that are um absolutely needed to accomplish the goal all right i'm going to run this and this will output something. All right, so it's giving me a project requirements doc and nice, it says daily challenge prompt, streak, daily streak checker, challenge submission, history tab, profile pad. So it did it really good. Okay, additional features, wants but not included, leaderboard, in-app messaging. Yeah, like I was actually thinking about this, like maybe a community feature where other sales reps can like do role play with each other and get better at sales. Um, sales reps, admin, boom, boom, boom. OpenAI API, wow, this is really cool. Um, I don't think that this is the right, oh, these are endpoints that I would have to create. It's already trying to tell me that I would need two endpoints um, to actually you know, interact with the application. So I can talk to you more about that uh, in a bit, but this looks really good from first sight. So I'm gonna copy this and we can always you know, come back and update it, but I think this looks fantastic. It's exactly kind of the vision that I had. And I mean, um, I, I know I can execute this really well. I'm not too I'm not too concerned about getting users. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this, and next um, I'm going to show you a tool called Eraser.io that I'm absolutely in love with right now. Um, it's essentially a diagramming software that's AI powered. Um, I just partnered up with them. There's a link in the description for my affiliate link if you want to sign up for Eraser. But um, before I even try to plug them, like, let me show you how dope this is. This is the dopest tool. We're actually um, going to be integrating their API inside of Dreams in the Apps and the learning platform. But this thing is dope. Check this out. I'm going to hit login and I'll log in with Google to actually, you know, authenticate to my account. But essentially it allows me to create pretty much any type of diagram uh, just based on a project requirements document. So check this out. I've created a new file called Closer Academy AI Sales Coach. And this is a... Um, blank document. Essentially, like I could have even generated the PRD from here, but I like writing it on my own. So now, where did my chat GPT go? Cool. I've copied this and now I'm just going to paste it into um, Closer Academy, or excuse me, into the uh, erasure.io. And then that's going to um, pretty much give this AI generator all the context it needs to actually build out a um, database diagram. So I'm going to now click AI diagram here. And then at the top right, you see it says entity relationship. Entity relationship is a type of diagram to help you illustrate your database structure, it's essentially a database design. So I'm gonna click on entity relationship. And then right here, I'm gonna say, design a database for a SQL database. Um, because I'm going to be using Superbase for this application. Uh, I'm gonna challenge uh, the status quo and go with Superbase. So design a database for a SQL database. Um, and um, that's pretty much it. And I'm gonna hit generate. And I'm gonna watch this design my database. Okay, cool. So I don't think it got the right database. This does not look like my app. So I'm going to go back to both. Okay. And now I'm going to click plus here. I'm going to say create diagrams as code. Generate diagram with natural language. Okay, no. Or describe your diagram. Maybe I need to 
copy this whole thing. I, I could have swore I just did this, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste everything in here and then hit generate and see what happens this time. Uh, there we go. So now it's kind of building it out. Okay. So I got my Closure Academy MVP Entity Relationship Diagram. I'm going to stop here for right now. Um, and then in the next video, I'm going to kind of explain how this uh, database works and how I'm going to actually modify it to do the stuff that I want to do. So I'll see you in the next lesson. So I'll see you in the next video. Make sure that you subscribe. So I'll see you in the next video. Make sure that you subscribe so that you can keep track of this series. There's a lot more videos where this came from.